Hey, I'm Jack with Recipal, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use a protein score to create a more accurate nutrition label. Specifically, I'm talking about PEDCAS, the Protein Digestibility Corrected Amino Acid Score. Basically, the PEDCAS gives you the quality of the protein on a scale of zero to one by the amino acid profile and how digestible the, the, the protein is. And what that tells us is how much of the protein your body can actually use. So if you already know your PEDCAST, it's super simple to enter this information into Recipal. You just go to the label page and under optional nutrients, you select show protein percentage. From there, you'll have a field that lets you enter the PCAT score. It's a number from you know, zero to one. And as soon as you enter that, you'll see the percent daily value of protein affected by whatever number you put into that field. Now, showing the percent daily value of protein is often optional. However, there's a few circumstances where it's required. So if you're making any claims about the protein in your product, even just that it contains protein, you need to have the percent daily value and that needs to be accurate. So especially for things like plant-based protein products where you're making this claim and the PCAS score is going to greatly affect the amount of protein that the body can actually use, this is required. Some other cases where you're required to show the protein daily value percentage would be for infants zero to 12 months and for children aged one to three years old. So the PEDCAS is a calculation of the amino acid score times the protein digestibility. The first thing we need to figure out is the amino acid score. And to do this, you need information about the amino acid makeup of your food product. Uh, in our example, we're gonna gather that information from the USDA database. Uh, there are other places you can look for it, but you're, in order to be able to calculate this on your own, you're gonna need to be able to access that data. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we calculate the amino acid score. We just need to look at the ingredients that are contributing protein to the recipe. In this example case that we made up, that's sunflower seed flour and spirulina, dried seaweed. And so we're gonna find this information in this case on the uh, USDA website, Food Data Central. And so when we're looking at our, uh, our first ingredient, the sunflower seed flour, we'll notice that it lets us know for a 100 grams portion, which is what we're using in this recipe, there's 48.1 grams of protein. And then we can go down to the essential amino acids and start to copy over each of the milligrams of amino acids here. So in this case, it's showing us to us in grams. Um, so 0.735 grams would obviously be 735 milligrams. So in this column, we're copying down all of the amounts of those essential amino acids. In a few of these cases, like here and here, two amino acids are added together because they complement each other. Um, and we're doing this for all of them, just getting this information directly from the USDA database. We're gonna do the same thing for our dried seaweed over here. So uh, over here, we have our dried seaweed. And in this case, we're gonna be using a cup of it, which has 64.4 grams of protein. And again, we're gonna scroll all the way down till we get to our essential amino acids right here. We're gonna convert those to milligrams and copy all of that information here. So this is pretty simple. We're gonna work our way down and add up the total milligrams of each amino acid. So in the case of histidine, we have 1330 milligrams coming from the sunflower seed flour, 1210 milligrams coming from the spirulina for a total of 2540 milligrams. We're also going to add the total protein, which is gonna be the same for all of these. So it's the 48.1 grams of protein from the sunflower seed flour plus the 64.4 grams of protein from the spirulina, 112.5 grams. To get the actual amounts of each amino acid, we just take the total amounts of that amino acid divided by the total amount of protein. And in this case with histidine, we see that it 
equals 22.58 milligrams per gram of protein. The next step is to compare this to the reference amount. So again, we're just dividing the actual amount to this reference amount, which can be found from a 1985 study, uh, and this is what allows you to figure out what your limiting amino acid is. So basically, any score that is under 100% represents an incomplete protein. And the lowest number below 100% is gonna be your limiting amino acid. So in the case of histidine, it's over 100%, so we don't have to worry about that. But as we go down this list, we see that only one of these is below 100%. It's lysine, and that's at 82.15%. And that's going to be our limiting amino acid that we're going to use. That's going to be our amino acid score. So now the protein digestibility is the one missing element of this equation. And in order to get this, we could reach out to our suppliers, see if they can provide the information. We can see if there's a reliable source online. But this isn't really something that you're going to be able to deduce yourself um, you know, from any sort of experiment. If you can't get it from a known source, then you're going to have to get it through lab analysis. Another thing to consider with protein digestibility is that if you have multiple ingredients contributing to protein in the recipe, you're going to need to calculate a weighted average of the protein digestibility. And that's pretty simple to do. You're just gonna take the percentage of protein of ingredient one times its protein digestibility plus the percentage of protein of ingredient two times its protein digestibility and so on. When you add that all together, you'll get the weighted average of the protein digestibility. So in our case, I was able to find the protein digestibility of each of these uh, protein contributing ingredients. And it's very easy to calculate what percentage they each contribute to the protein. So the sunflower seed flour contributes 43% to the protein and has a 0.93 protein digestibility. And the spirulina contributes 57% to the protein and has a 0.85 protein digestibility. So when we put that all together, we get our weighted average of the protein digestibility. Okay, so putting it all together, we calculated our amino acid score of 0.82. We did this by dividing the limiting amino acid by the reference amount to get that 0.82 figure. And then we figured out our weighted protein digestibility of 0.88. We figured this out by taking the percentage of the um, protein contributing ingredients and multiplying that by each of their protein digestibilities. Now we just have to plug these two numbers into the formula. So we do our amino acid score times our protein digestibility, 0.82 times 0.88, and we get our final PEDCAS score. From here, we could take our PEDCAS score of 0.72 and plug it into Recipal it'll automatically take the percent daily value of protein and adjust it accordingly. If you already have your PEDCAS, it's super simple to enter into Recipal. If you need to calculate it on your own, it actually isn't that difficult to do the calculation. The hardest part is actually just finding all of the right data uh, you're gonna need to be able to do the calculation yourself. But if you're able to locate that data, it's a pretty easy uh, calculation to do and then you're able to just put that number into Recipal and have an accurate protein percentage. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe and also reach out to us with any questions. If you wanna get started making nutrition labels for free, check out recipal.com.